Hey, what's up, guys? Nature, welcome back to Sonic Academy. We are diving into Bitwig level two with this series. We're still pretty much sticking with the basics in Bitwig, but we are going to expand on everything that we did in the level one course. So, if you haven't gone to check out level one, I would suggest you start with that before moving on to level two, where we expand on the track that we built in that original course. And once again, this is an updated series from Dom Kane's original Bitwig level one and two. However, I have tried to uh, incorporate as many new things as, as possible that are in the newer updates uh, we are working with but week 5 and 5.1 this course is going to cover a number of topics such as send effects uh, compression side chaining uh, some advanced routing stuff we're going to do a little bit of sound design and building some effect sounds for our projects as well more advanced audio editing and a whole bunch of other little bits and pieces thrown in to help you along with your bootwig journey now just to reiterate once again this is designed for beginners uh, intermediates that you may find a couple of useful bits of information here and there but this is really designed to get you into bitwig as a complete beginner i hope you guys enjoy this series best of luck and we'll see you in the next video cheers all right welcome back guys uh we are going to dive straight in to the practical now no more beating around the bush with theory about bitwig uh, let's kick things off and take a look at side chaining or side chain compression in this case uh, we're going to do some additional compression further down the line but I'll take a look at various different ways that you can deal with side chaining, and it's going to lead us into some other stuff after this video as well. It's something I want to cover now because uh, chances are it will fix a lot of things in the mix by ducking elements out of other important elements like the kick. Uh, we're going to focus on just ducking these chords and the bass uh, in this video. So we've got our chords here. We've got this bass part. Bass is kind of offbeat, so it's not going to be too much of an issue there. We might actually just, uh, maybe just for the sake of this video, we'll do this so we can actually duck the bass. So obviously we want to make room for our kick. I'm going to show you a number of different ways to do this because uh, there is traditional ways and there are not so traditional ways and all of them have um, a place in your Bitwig workflow for various different things, not just side chaining volume. So let's just get going and we'll take a look at the sort of uh, more traditional way to set this up first. Right, so um, I'm on the chord section now. I want to duck the chords out of the way of the kick. Uh, so to do this, we're going to use a compressor that can be sidechained. Now, don't use the compressor plugin. Uh, it can't be sidechained in Bitwig. You're going to be looking for the Dynamics plugin instead. Now, all you're going to have to look for now is this device input down at the bottom. And you'll see by clicking this, it'll open up all the tracks in your uh, project. In actual fact, we don't need this uh, Bitwig old anymore, so we can actually remove, just save this as Bitwig level two. And we can actually remove this entire section just so that it's less complicated. Uh, let's go back to our chords and click the device input. And we're going to be looking for the, the kick drum, yes. We're going to go to drums, kick. Now we can go pre or post. This is going to be pre-fader, so even if the fader is down, you're still going to be getting the signal from the kick to duck. Uh, we probably want to go with post for this, because if the, I pull the kick out, I kind of want the side chaining to disappear. Uh, so we're going to go with post for that one. We're now sending the kick into our compressor, or our dynamics here. Let me bring this up a little bit for you. And let's play this back and see what's going on here. Right, and so right off the bat, my default settings, I have that picked up already. Uh, you're looking at the high threshold, not the low threshold. This is uh, sort of expansion, rather, or upward compression. We're looking for the downward compression, yeah? So you see with these extreme settings, I'm getting the compression going really far down. We can adjust the attack and release times. have a high ratio there bring the threshold up rather we kind of want that just to touch that end bit there so that it's removed from the kick but then has time to come back up again and we can also take a look at this uh we'll just add a oscilloscope after this it's always really nice and bit weak that you can kind of view what you're doing as you go 
let's uh, just scale this. So you can see ducking the chords out there. If we take the compressor off. And there you have it. So very, very simple to set up in Bitwig. You just select your input there and that's it. And just remember to use the Dynamics uh, device, not the standard compressor. The standard compressor is great for normal compression. Uh, but as I said, you can't set up a sidechain for this one. So I'm going to disable the Dynamics now. Let's take a look at another way to do this. Uh, another really useful way, which I quite like as well, is to bring in a tool. And you could actually do this just on the actual fader itself, uh, but we I like to do it on the tool so it's separate. If I ever want to remove it, I can just remove it. We actually do have a tool here already, but we'll do it on this one. What we're going to do is we're going to open up our modulator section here, and we're going to open up the modulator list and choose a modulator called Audio Sidechain. There we go. So this Audio Sidechain modulator that we have here now, we can expand that and maybe just so maybe just close all of these down just so we have some space. We'll just minimize those. So this audio side chain, again, we've got a device input here. So we can set this to our device drums kick post again. Very much the same that we just did with the Dynamics uh, plugin. Uh, except this time it's not a compressor. This time we are just dealing with automation. So if we play this back now, you can see you've got some controls here and you can see there's something happening there with the actual um, signal that's coming to this uh, modulator here. We'll bring the rise all the way down. That's essentially the attack time. So we're getting those little spikes there now. We can increase the gain of the kick coming into this. So you're getting considerably more data there now. You can adjust the fall like that too, which is going to be your decay. You can also adjust this, so this, if you are looking for a trigger from a certain part of the kick, maybe you don't want to be triggering all from the bottom in there, you could filter that out and you could grab your sidechain information just from maybe the high section. But in this case, we kind of want the whole kick to come through anyway, so that's going to be fine for us. Now what we're going to do is, rather than compressing this, we're just going to use the modulator here and bring this down. And then you have it. It's as simple as that. It's taking the audio signal, or the waveform from the kick. It's converting that into control data, and then we're using that control data to modulate the volume down and up as it plays back. This is probably my favorite way to do side chaining in Bitwig. Uh, there's a number of other benefits that you can get from this too. Um, if we were to be using additional plugins here, you could use this on filters and so forth. Uh, it can be applied to pretty much anything. Uh, you can use that side chain information to do whatever you want. Um, and with uh, Bitwig's project level modulators, what we can do here is we could actually take this one and go to the project level and put that in there we'll remove that one so there we've got the information the trigger coming from the kick at project level we can turn down our volume now we could just go to our base channel and let's add another tool there for example we can use exactly the same modulator at project level bring that down there you go. Uh, we could decide, let's say just the loop here, we want to bring down the volume on the actual fader. Take a listen to what that does. Uh, we can actually do that with something like the hats rather. Let's check out here. Gotcha. And also the benefit with this, you don't have to do it just that way. We could do this in reverse if you wanted to, for example. 
So you could use certain triggers in the track to create more groove on certain things, emphasize other things. It doesn't have to be traditional side chain the whole time. This really is a very, very powerful way of working like this. Uh, and this also doesn't have to be a kick that's doing this either. You could have some other groove element uh, in the track generating data as a control like this that you can then send to other things. We're going to do something similar with a modulator again. Uh, however, this one also gives you a lot of control. Let's remove this modulator again and we'll bring in curves. And uh, again, this is global, so it's going to be any track that we can assign this to. We're going to open this up and we're going to go to quarter notes for this one. Uh, we want to set this to sync to our track as well because we want that phase to be synced. We don't want that going at random. We can open this up, edit our graph now or edit our curve here. We're going to leave this as unipolar. You can switch or as bipolar, sorry. You can switch this between unipolar and bipolar. Uh, this one, you're going to have only positive values. This one, you're going to have positive and negative. The reason why I want this is because we actually want negative values from this going into any modulation that we do. We want to pull things down. Uh, if we do it the other way around, it's actually going to be the reverse. So you've got to do the curve upside down. Uh, what we can do now is we can go to reset the curve here and we're not going to go full. We want to be zero in the middle here. Now I can bring this one down I'm going to create a point there and then we can create our curve like this. And you can get more detailed if you want. And do something like that maybe. But there you go. So you got your curve very much like something like uh, Shaper Box from Cable Guys. Same concept. Now that you've got the curve in there, all we have to do is we can go and assign this again to the volume. And we're going to go this way. And again, this can be applied to anything as well. The only downside with this one is that it is running constantly the whole time. It's not following the kick. So if you stop the kick from playing, this is going to continue. My preferred way is uh, using the audio side chain like we looked at. Uh, it's just gives you a lot more flexibility as to when stuff is being ducked as well. If you take the kick out, like I said, it's going to stop um, side chaining. So we'll use this one for now. And we're going to go to kick again. We'll just quickly set that up post. Drive that a little bit more, bring the filters down. And there we go, we can apply that to our volume. And we'll do it to the bass as well. There you go. So that's a couple of different ways to look at side chaining. And obviously, this doesn't have to just be uh, side chain compression or ducking. It can be applied to a number of different uh, processes in your track. Anything that you want to impart a uh, rhythmical uh, quality onto something else, um, you can use this to do that, uh, either with filters, volume, whatever, what have you. Right, let's move into the next video. I'll catch you then. Cheers.